Imagine a world where colossal beasts roam endless forests, where the ground shakes under the weight of 13-ton elephants, and the roars of cave lions echo through misty valleys. It's 48,000 years ago in a frost-kissed clearing in what we now call Southern Germany. A male cave lion, scarred from countless battles, rests in the pale sunlight, unaware that he's no longer the hunter. From the shadows, a group of stocky, cunning figures creeps closer, their spears gleaming with flint tips. In a flash, a spear pierces the lion's side, collapsing his lungs. This isn't just a hunt, it's a turning point. The Neanderthals, once dismissed as mere brutes, have claimed the crown as Eurasia's ultimate predators. But how did they rise to rule this savage world, and why did their reign end? Stick with me as we journey into the prehistoric past to uncover the epic saga of the Neanderthal kings, a tale of triumph, survival, and tragedy that still echoes in the bones of the Ice Age. For too long, Neanderthals were painted as dim-witted cavemen, dragging their knuckles through a brutal existence. But recent discoveries have shattered that stereotype, revealing a species far more sophisticated than we ever imagined. They weren't just surviving the Ice Age, they were dominating, it hunting beasts that would make modern predators quiver. Yet their story isn't just one of power, it's a cautionary tale about the fragility of even the mightiest rulers. In this video, we'll explore how Neanderthals became the apex predators of their time, what their world was like 48,000 years ago, and why their dominance couldn't last. I'll weave in my own insights, drawing parallels to modern ecosystems and human resilience to show why their story matters today. Let's step back into the Pleistocene where survival was a brutal art form and the Neanderthals were its masters. Picture Eurasia 300,000 years ago during the Pleistocene epoch. Dense forests of pine and birch stretch across what's now Europe, interrupted by vast steppes and icy tundras. The air is thick with the scent of resin and damp earth. This is a land of giants, woolly mammoths, trumpet in the distance, their tusks curling like crescent moons. Straight tusked elephants, twice the size of modern African elephants, lumber through clearings cave bears weighing up to a ton hibernate in shadowy grottos, and cave lions larger than any big cat today stalk the underbrush. The climate swings wildly warm interglacials give way to brutal ice ages reshaping the landscape and testing every creature's adaptability. In this unforgiving world, Neanderthals thrived. Their stocky bodies built like tanks were perfect for conserving heat in the cold. Their broad noses warmed icy air before it hit their lungs, and their muscular frames, packing more power than the average modern human, made them formidable. But it wasn't just their physique that set them apart. Neanderthals had brains as large as ours, capable of planning teamwork and innovation. They crafted flint-tipped spears, wore jewelry made from eagle talons, and may have even painted cave walls or buried their dead with care. These weren't mindless brutes, they were strategic, social, and maybe even sentimental, ruling a world where survival demanded both brawn and brains. Neanderthals didn't just survive in this world of giants, they conquered it. Their hunting prowess was unmatched, and the fossil record tells a story of relentless predation. In 2023, archaeologists uncovered a site in Germany dated to 125,000 years ago, where Neanderthals hunted straight-tusked elephants, beasts up to 13 tons, the largest land animals of their time. Over 2,000 years, dozens of generations left behind bones with precise cut marks, showing they targeted older solitary males easier to isolate than herd-protected females. This wasn't scavenging, it was calculated, cooperative hunting, requiring groups of 20 or more to bring down a single elephant. Butchering such a beast could take days, but the payoff was massive. One elephant could feed 100 Neanderthals for a month with fatty foot pads harvested for extra calories. Their menu was diverse woolly rhinos, bison cave bears, even small game like crabs and roosting birds. A 23 study of a 48,000-year-old cave lion skeleton revealed a spear wound 
and butcherers' marks proof that Neanderthals didn't just hunt herbivores, they took on other apex predators. This wasn't a one-off. Their diet confirmed by bone isotopes was overwhelmingly meat-based, with large herbivores as the mainstay. Their strength teamwork and tool spears, clubs, and scrapers made them a force of nature. Unlike modern humans who often rely on ranged weapons, Neanderthals were ambush hunters striking up close with devastating force. This niche as meat-hungry predators defined their role in the ecosystem, but it also set the stage for their downfall. Reflecting on this, I'm struck by how Neanderthal's success mirrors modern apex predators like lions or wolves. Being at the top comes with a catch, you're only as strong as the ecosystem supporting you. Neanderthal's reliance on big game made them vulnerable, much like how today's big cats struggle when prey dwindles. Their strength and teamwork were incredible, but their specialized lifestyle left little room for error. Imagine the coordination required to hunt a 13-ton elephant, dozens of people shouting thrusting spears, dodging trampling feet. It's a testament to their intelligence and grit, but also a reminder specialization can be a double-edged sword. In today's world, we see similar risks when we over-rely on a single resource like fossil fuels or monoculture crops. The Neanderthals teach us that dominance doesn't guarantee survival. Around 40,000 years ago, the Neanderthals vanished. Their extinction is one of prehistory's greatest mysteries, but two main theories dominate. The first points to Homo sapiens who arrived in Eurasia around 50,000 years ago. Unlike Neanderthals, we were leaner built for endurance and masters of persistence, hunting, chasing prey until it collapsed from exhaustion. We also wielded projectile weapons like bows and arrows as evidenced by 54,000 year old arrowheads found in a French cave in 22. Neanderthals, by contrast, relied on close-range spears and never adopted archery even after meeting us. Our broader diet, including plants and smaller game and lower caloric needs, gave us an edge. We may have outcompeted them, pushing them out of their ecological niche or even engaged in direct conflict, though evidence of violence is scarce. The second theory blames the environment. Between 44,000 and 40,000 years ago, Europe faced rapid cooling, turning forests into open grasslands. This shift decimated the large herbivores. Neanderthals depended on like mammoths and elephants, which thrived in forested habitats. Grasslands supported smaller, faster prey, better suited to our hunting style. As apex predators, Neanderthals were perched precariously at the top of the food chain. When the ecosystem wobbled due to climate change or our arrival, they fell. Modern parallels are stark. Think of polar bears losing sea ice or tigers losing forests. Apex predators are the first to suffer when the balance tips. I find the environmental angle especially compelling. It's a stark reminder that no species, no matter how dominant, is immune to change. Neanderthals weren't outsmarted by us, they were outmaneuvered by a changing world. Their story feels personal because it mirrors our own vulnerabilities. We've built a civilization that's dominant but fragile, dependent on stable climates and resources. If the Neanderthals, with all their strength and cunning, could vanish, what does that say about us? Their extinction wasn't just a loss, it was a warning about the cost of living at the top. To make this vivid, let's zoom in on two moments from the fossil record like snapshots of Neanderthal life. First picture, a Neanderthal band in Germany, 125,000 years ago, gathered around a felled, straight-tusked elephant. The air is thick with the smell of blood and pine. Men and women work in sync, their flint knives flashing as they carve through tough hide. Children watch learning the cuts that yield the most meat. The group's leader, perhaps a seasoned hunter with scars from past hunts, directs the team to harvest the fatty foot pads, a delicacy packed with calories. This scene, repeated for millennia, shows a community bound by shared purpose, their survival tied to cooperation and skill. Now fast forward to 48,000 years ago in that same German forest. 
A lone cave lion naps its golden fur dappled by sunlight. A Neanderthal hunting party silent and coordinated closes in. One hunter, perhaps a young man proving his worth, hurls a spear with deadly precision. The lion roars, but it's too late. The spear pierces its side. The group butchers the carcass, taking not just meat, but the lion's claws, perhaps for jewelry or status. These moments aren't just about survival. They're about a culture that celebrated strength and ingenuity, leaving marks on bones that tell their story 48,000 years later. The Neanderthal's rise and fall is more than a prehistoric drama. It's a mirror for our own time. They ruled a world of giants wielding intelligence and brute force to conquer the unconquerable. Yet their strength was their weakness. By mastering the art of hunting, they tied their fate to a fragile ecosystem. When the world changed, whether through climate shifts or our arrival, they couldn't adapt fast enough. The lesson is clear, dominance is fleeting without flexibility. Today, as we face climate change and resource strain, we must learn from the Neanderthals. Adaptability, not just strength, is the key to survival. Let's honor their legacy by building a future that bends with change, not breaks under it. So what do you think? Could we survive the Ice Age like the Neanderthals did, or are we too set in our ways? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you want more prehistoric adventures, subscribe and hit the bell. Until next time, keep exploring the past. It's got plenty to teach us.